Many of you uh, may be aware that from time to time I can be heard on Coast to Coast AM, which is billed as the largest late night talk radio program probably in the world, uh, emanating out of Los Angeles and uh, has something like 600 affiliates across North America and Guam, if you're keeping track. Uh, I'm going to speak with one of my colleagues on Coast. In fact, I think we started Coast to Coast around the same time, 2014. And uh, we're going to talk uh, Bigfoot and cryptids and haunted locations with Connie Willis, a professional broadcaster, radio and television for two decades on networks like Disney, Oxygen, ESPN, Speed, QVC, HSN, and more. And again, you can hear her on Coast to Coast. She's been there since 2014. She has several of her own programs as well. She's got a, a brand new podcast she'll tell us about. And of course, Blue Rock Talk, which is her exclusive membership show, taking you to creepy hotspots with real investigations of Bigfoot, strange lights, and hauntings live virtually. And a Connie After Dark, which is her live virtual open bar. Oh, I like the sound of that, an open bar. <laughs> Nothing worse than a cash bar. Uh, where you can enjoy a drink uh, or water, if you'd prefer, and a conversation with her and others from your home. And uh, you can find all of this at ConnieWillis.com. Connie, great to see you and hear you. How you are you? too. I'm doing okay. I'm hanging in there. It's daylight outside, and I've got a mic in front of me. It's supposed to be dark at night when we when we get on the mic here. That's true. We are uh, we are creatures of the night. <laughs> That's true. Um, people are always, I think people that follow coast to coast are always interested in kind of getting a little backstage pass and, you know, I don't, we don't tell tales at a school. There's not much to tell. I mean, it's, you know, we, it's all done remotely. We're not in Los Angeles. Right. Uh, it's probably not as, you know, as, um, uh, exotic and, and, uh, as people may think, but, uh, what for you is the, the, the best part of guest hosting on coast? Oh my goodness. Oh, that's kind of hard to answer because it's so many things. I, you know, I was in, I was in music radio for like 15, 17 years, right before I even graduated from college. Uh, I was doing music videos or music, you know, music radio. So if you've ever done that, you know, that, you know, there's not a lot of talk. Usually you're just pumping the music and back selling it, front selling it, all that kind of thing. And you're working pretty hard usually. You're usually five to six days a week. You have events that you go to. You have a couple hours of production when you get off the air. Uh, the person that's supposed to take over next after you doesn't show up, so you got to do their shift, you know, all sorts of things, just like WKRP in Cincinnati, totally, right? That's how that radio is. And then from there, I started doing television, and it was national work, like what you were you had just mentioned. And after doing that, at one point, I said, you know what? I, I miss radio. However, if I get back into it, it would only be talk. And, and I thought about that, and I thought, coast to coast would be it, you know, something like that. <laughs> so it, I'm blessed to be in it. So there, right, right there is one good thing. It's talk. It's it's um, things that are not the norm. It's not angry politics. It's not uh, the daily news. You got to stay on top of everything. It's, uh, I mean, you know, that's good too, but I just love learning about the things that I have a passion for and talking about those things with other people. So that's a plus too, because that's truly a passion for me. Doing TV, they would throw me into, you know, if you did good uh, on one show, a producer might be talking to another producer saying Merry Christmas or something, and they'd say, oh, I got a great talent, and then you'd be pushed over there, which was all great. So you'd go to do another show, but it, it didn't have anything else to do with a past show. And sometimes, like I did car racing, I didn't know anything about under the hood or anything. I, I can put gas in it and uh, ask, you know, pay for someone to change the oil or something like that. Or, you know, oops, I forgot to fix the tires. Uh, that one just blew and that one's about to. So, you know, let me pay. But um, radio, you know, that's just where it's at. You know, you want to find your passion and that's it. So Coast to Coast was it. So that was my big plus. But just being Coast and the fact that, the fact that it is the biggest, you were just talking about, it is the biggest nighttime show on the planet. And 
And uh, I think it you know, knocks off a lot of the daytime shows, too. It's just amazing. I'm so happy to be on here. So I, I was asked uh, October of 2014, because it was around my birthday that I remember. So I felt like it was this great birthday present. What about you? Do you remember the month? Uh, actually, it was um, April 2009, my very first show. Oh, okay. Uh, then I started doing it regularly in January of 2014. My The very first show was in uh, April 2009, and uh, my lovely bride, who I refer to as the mighty Aphrodite, um, <laughs> just on a whim. I mean, she's my my biggest fan and my biggest critic, and and oh. um, she put a package together, and I and I saw her putting you know my resume and all this stuff into an envelope and address. And I said, "What are you doing, honey?" And she says, "I'm sending this to Premier Radio Network." I said, oh. "Why? Why are you doing that?" She says, "Because I want to get get you on coast to coast." And I said, "Yeah, as if." And so she she found out who to send it to. It was the the vice president of talk at Premier, who had, as it ha she did she does her research. As it happened uh, at that time, and I forgot. Uh, was it Bill? It wasn't Bill. No, it was Oliver, someone. And it as it happened, he was a fellow Canuck. He was from Montreal. I don't oh. I don't know if he's with the company anymore. Okay. So she said, "I'll send it to him, and I'll bet I'll he'll think it's it would be cool to have a fellow Canadian." guest hosting on coast to coast smart lady. Said, okay well godspeed good luck <laughs> and smart. sure enough one day the phone rang and it was the aforementioned oliver from premier and he said george is taking next friday off because it's his daughter's birthday and <sighs> i think it would be and he actually said it right back i think it would be cool to have a fellow canadian guest <laughs> hosting on coast to coast so what do you say so um that's, That's excellent. So I did one show, and I, you know, I didn't, I didn't hit a home run, but I thought it was a kind of a serviceable first attempt. You know, I was pretty nervous, and uh, that was it. I didn't, I never heard back for oh. five years, and I thought, okay, well, you know what? I did one coast to coast. I can always say I've done one coast to coast AM. They can't That's take right. that away from me. And then uh, Lisa Lyon called back in January of 2014, and been doing, you know, typically about three shifts a month uh, ever since, and it's. It's uh, it's really a, a thrill each and every time, and again, it's having that enormous platform, mm -hmm. you know, available to you. And late night, it's the greatest audience. Late night audiences are the greatest audiences in radio, and I love live radio, um, and I love the 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 whole culture and community that is evolved around the the coast mythos, and you know, to be uh, in the same family really mentioned in the same family as people yeah. like Art Bell and George Norrie and George Knapp and, and, and everyone. It's, it's just a, it's a, an absolute uh, thrill each and every it, time. It is. I, I always think, wow, I'm a part of that history now. I'm a part exactly. of that history. Even you if are. you just do one show, you're a part of that history. Uh, so you ready for my story on it? How that happened for yes, me? Please. You're going to like it because it's kind of similar. I mean, it's just kind of this shot in the dark. I was actually at one point, uh, I put together a reel and uh, it was basically to be a lead in, you know, I was hoping to do a nationally syndicated show and it led in to Coast. Now, I didn't do enough homework to know anything at the time that um, I, I, I guess I didn't do enough homework to know anything at that point because I started going, I was in New York City and knocking on doors and taking taking my reels into places, doing different things. I never thought of coast because it's coast. They don't need me. Who, what? They got George Norrie. They're good. They're set. You know, I didn't even know about the other, everybody else coming in, you know, the, the weekend all of hosts, us, weekend. other people, yeah. weekend guest hosts and stuff like that. I was just like, they don't need me. They, they've got everybody they need. So, so I was trying to do a lead in, not, not even, not, not even trying to go against it, but man, when I was out there, everybody was you know i learned how huge coast was and it was it was a pleasure to to learn all that and i just thought you know i just i just want to lead in i'm not trying to compete i i can't do that i just want to be the person before and uh they actually had well clyde lewis at that point uh most people had that or they felt ground like, zero right yeah with ground zero and and Everybody had said, well, we kind of feel like we've got that because we already have Coast. Uh, and, you know, they kept the real things like that, whatever. But I did that for quite a while. 
And I thought, well, I guess this isn't going to happen. But a guy by the name, let's see, Rusty Walker, he has since passed, but he uh, was a consultant, big radio consultant, great, huge with country. He won uh, country music um, or country consultant of the year or something at one right. point. I didn't even know they had that award, but he won. He was great. Everybody loved this guy. And I'd asked him originally about I'd given him the reel. He knew the format was basically like Coast. It just because that was always my passion. In fact, when I was at uh, K92 FM in Orlando, the ops manager there would always say, Connie, you heard that new show out there, Art Bell? You know, you that's what you could do. <clears throat> they actually thought about doing it at that station at the time. Um, then I got into TV. But it was great because he said, Connie, okay, I'm going to work with you. I've got somebody to call. And it will open you up really quickly to 80 stations. So we'll syndicate this. Uh, he said, I don't believe in the content, but I'm going to, but I believe in you. I'll salute you all the way up. He said, I thought, this is great. This is wonderful. You always like my work from radio. And I thought, this is wonderful. This is good. I'm just going to wait. And then he died. He had a heart attack on his bike. It was absolutely horrible. It was just horrible. He was just a wonderful guy, too young. It was, uh. But before he had passed, he had said, you know, Connie, you ought to just send a tape to Coast. So after he had passed and a while later, I remembered what he said. It's almost like he tapped me from the other side, which you and I would believe, right? Hmm. He, um, so, so I wrote, I put the, I put together, I found who to send it to, which was the president up in New York. So, so Julie, <laughs> Julie Talbot, our president, I sent it to her. And, uh, and an email. Remember when you used to have to send all those packages and stuff, really big, heavy packages from oh, yeah. a long time ago? Yeah. Just sent it digitally. It was less than 30 minutes. It might have been 20 minutes or even less. I got an email back. And she had said, basically, you're on the team. Uh, our VP is going to call you. And and he, he wrote me like 15 minutes or less after that and wow. said, okay, you're going to be on uh, the kind of like you this next coming weekend, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I hung up you know, or not. I, I wasn't on the phone, but I got off the computer and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm on coast to coast. It was that easy. It was that simple, you know, but I think you and I both have put in a lot of work uh, beforehand to be able to get to that point as well. But you know what? Hey, she's from Kentucky. I'm from Kentucky. She went to UK. I went to UK and then our VP as well, big Kentucky fan. So we're all Kentucky fans go big blue. And so yeah. that does work, doesn't it? You know, you being Canadian as well. I guess that was my in. Yeah, it was um, serendipitous, part serendipitous and a lot of sweat for sure. Yes. So you mentioned, you know, your passion and uh, the paranormal and Bigfoot. Did you move, by the way, because you're now, I mean, you've moved around, you know, that old w yeah. WKRP up and down the dial. I mean, you yeah. have you have been up and down the dial and crisscrossing the country and Kentucky and Orlando, and now you're in Colorado. Um, this may sound like a weird question, but did you move to Colorado because you wanted to be closer to Bigfoot? That is a weird question. I cannot believe you, Richard. <laughs> you asked something weird. <laughs> um, no, you know what? I, I was, uh, at one point, I was trying to decide where to go. I was back in Kentucky helping my mom. Um and before that, I was in Philly. Yeah, I went from like, I actually went from Lexington to Louisville. Uh, wait, Louisville to Lexington, Lexington to Louisville, uh, Philly, San Antonio quickly, Sarasota, which, oh my gosh, I, that's where I learned. I don't care about the market size. I just want to like the city I live in. Right. That's where I learned that in radio because usually you, you, you bounce up to the higher sure. markets, right? Um, Philly, that, that's where I was doing QVC and stuff like that. But I, I, I actually got on Philly market because the first show of coast, I was in Philly, but uh -huh. then moved to Kentucky and did it from there, left Kentucky saying, you know what? I've been out East for long, too long. Where do I go next? So it was going to be, it was either going to be Denver, Seattle, and I was considering LA Sherman Oaks where the, the, um, uh, headquarters is right. A premier and coast, yeah. coast. And, um, even heard there might have been a studio out in Hawaii. I thought, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a studio in Hawaii? <laughs> but I did think about getting a little closer to the station. Um, and normally you would, right? You'd think that's a good idea. But 
it doesn't really matter. I, I'm in a closet. I think you might, you know, you're in, you're, you're at home too, right? I, I love it. I'm in an actual closet. I love it. Um, so Denver, it was, and here I am. However, you're right though. I mean, outside my window, the Rockies, beautiful. And there, Richard, there's like everything out there. You know, we talk about Skinwalker Ranch. George Knapp, of course, has done wonders with that. And But the, their Skinwalker Ranches are everywhere, you know, just has a different name. Or not a name yet. No one's pegged it yet. But they're everywhere, everywhere. The place I go up to, that Dennis Fole is the one who introduced me to that area. He is the guy that if anybody's into the Bigfoot world, he was the, I think the only guy ever paid at the time, maybe there's some more people, to study what was called the Pancake House in Kentucky, actually, also known as the Erickson Project, because Erickson is the one who funded like $3.5 million into uh, the study of the Bigfoot that are around this house. This lady used to feed pancakes to a Bigfoot or a Bigfoot family for years, like maybe even over decades. And so they wanted to study because there was so much activity. And he was the guy that did it. Anyway, he's just an amazing person. I love him to death. He's one of my members of my show. But he showed me that area. And there's so much stuff, at least the area I go to. There's so much activity up there. Bigfoot, UFOs, beams of light, sparkles, dogman, things I've never seen before. <laughs> it's like, what is that entity? Just different things happen all the time. And I, I love that. Sometimes it's a little much, though, Richard. Sometimes I get worn out because it's just too much. When You know, it's not like just once in a while, once in 10 year, years, you see something. It's every time. And what is every time? Is that once a month, twice a month? Well, my show, uh, Blue Rock Talk, has three elements to it. It has Far Out Thursday, which is interview like this. Bigfoot Friday, interview like this. So Far Out is anything other than Bigfoot. And then it's uh, my project, Creepy Hotspots, which which is the live investigations of Bigfoot, Dogman, Strange Lights, which could be UFO or not. Um and then hauntings. And so if we do a haunting, it's overnight, it's live overnight. That's all you can take. You're done by the time you've done the midnight hour and the bewitching hour. You're like done. Um, but everybody That's live participates. Stream. That's live yeah, it's stream. all live stream. Yeah. And everybody investigates with me. I might be there or maybe even somebody else might be there. Maybe you say, hey, Connie, there's this really cool place down the street. I'll do a, a spot with you and you'll lead it for us. And I'll be here, you know, doing something like that. And yeah, everybody's into it in the live chat, whether it's a haunting or out there in the Rockies or wherever it might be where there's activity. And so far, you know, hundred percent, we're batting a thousand gotten activity on every one of them because you do your homework. Right. But in the live chat, everybody's just as interactive. You know, we're not about all these devices and stuff. I mean, with ghost related stuff, a lot of people really like to do that. Um, you know, I'm just very particular about some of that stuff, especially, you know, I do try to mix some of the things to see how it works. But what we've learned that has worked with us is we're all believers, first of all. We're, we're not haters and haters don't pay. It's paid mem membership, but it's very deep. It's not 101, are you still deciding? It's you already know. So when when I'm at a place, there's people in the live chat going, Connie, there's something to the left. That's what I thought. I'm feeling the same thing. So we use our intuition and it's just so fun. It's so fun because people all over are are enjoying the show. They're in Canada. They're they're I mean, across the states, obviously, but Alaska and Hawaii states as well. But I love these. It's amazing how many people from Hawaii and Alaska have just recently joined the show. I'm so I love it because they've got so many stories to tell to, especially Alaska. And oh, yeah. it, it's just so fun to hear from them, but everybody uses their own intuition and, um, and it's amazing what we've learned by doing that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to listen to the rest of this conversation, subscribe to my podcast, Richard Serrett's Strange Planet.
available wherever you get your podcasts. And if you want to support my work, think about becoming a premium subscriber. You get to listen to commercial-free episodes. You'll receive my free monthly newsletter, discounts on Strange Planet merchandise, and even an exclusive monthly Q&A with me over Zoom. For the premium subscription, go to strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm, strangeplanet.supportingcast.fm. All the links are in the description below this video. Don't forget about Throwback Thursday on this channel when I dive deep into the audio archives and replay an old episode of my former late night radio program. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. A new Richard Serrett's Strange Planet drops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Subscribe at strangeplanetpodcast.com.